I'm going to be showing you today how to use the Wick Editor website in order to create frame animation. I created this drawing in uh, on paper and I scanned it using a scanning app and I'm opening it in a website called Photopia. I right clicked on the layer and then rasterized it. Hit select all, edit copy and I am pasting it into a brand new document. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because it started out as a PDF and I need a Photoshop document, otherwise none of this stuff will work. So once I have created my Photoshop document um, and I've, you know, changed the size to 10 by 10 or something more reasonable and uh, made sure that the background is transparent, I'm going to do edit paste and I will now have my um, my uh, image in the new document. I'm unlocking the background and now I need to find the magic wand tool. It is, uh, first of all, I'm rasterizing the, the background and then I'm going to find the magic wand tool. It's one of the selection tools. It's a hidden. And then I'm going to click on the background uh, and then I'm going to delete it by hitting either delete or backspace to delete the background. Anyway, so now each part of the person's body needs to be in its own layer. Um, so when I cut out the arm with the lasso tool, I'm going to do edit cut and then edit paste and then use the move tool to drag the arm to the correct position. I'm also going to rename that layer arm. You have to do that immediately or you're going to get very confused. So every single part of the person's body needs to have its own layer. So I go back to the background layer, I cut out the eye, I hit edit paste, then I use the move tool to put the eye in the right position and then I rename the layer eye. And I'm going to do that with every single part of the body. So when I'm done, every part of this person's uh, body is going to have its own layer named correctly and be in the correct position. So I'm going to speed up the, uh, the video while I do that part. Once I'm done, I'm going to have to save this layered Photoshop document to the web. It's impossible to save a layered Photoshop file to, um, it's impossible to save it to a Chromebook. You can save it to a normal laptop, but if you're working on a Chromebook, the only way to do it is to save it to the web. So you're going to do File, and then you're going to pick Publish online and you're going to select a PSD as the format which is a Photoshop file and that will preserve the layers. Now this is gonna give you um, a website address that's peculiar just to this file and if you don't copy down that website address you won't know where to find the file. So let me show you how to do this. Um, you go file And I tried to export it. Let's not do that right now. And no, I'm going to do, no, not export as, not, no, no. Publish online as PSD. And now it's going to give you a unique website address. You hit OK. It is publishing and it is generating that website address. And now it is reopening the file on that website address. This only works if you've created a free Photopia account. So before you even start this project, make sure you um, create an account and now you're going to actually just paste, copy and paste that URL into a Google Doc and write down what it is that you're actually um, saving. That this is a PSD of your puppet. Your next step is you're going to select all the layers, every single layer. Hold the shift key down so you can select multiple layers. And then you're going to draw a rectangular marquee around your little person and you're going to do edit, copy, merged. So the other day I cre started to create a series of these puppets in a walk cycle. So I'm going to paste it into that document which I saved from the other day and I'm going to line up the layer. Now I'm going to go back to my first 
uh, document, my first person that I've been working on, and I'm going to move the arms and legs to make the person look like they're running by doing edit, transform, rotate to the various layers. And of course, I'm going to know what layer I am moving because I've named the layers. So I know it's uh, thigh one or calf one, uh, thigh two, calf two, arm. I know. Uh, I. I know exactly what I'm moving because I named the layers before. And you just go to each layer and you do edit, transform, rotate, and you can bend the legs, reposition them, make the person look like they're walking or doing something. And then you're going to go back and select all the layers again. And you're going to do the rectangular marquee around um, that person. And then you're going to do copy merged again and paste it into your other layered document as a as a new layer of the person in a new position and then you're going to use the move tool to line them up again so you're basically just moving the person slightly and repeating what you did before so there's my rectangular marquee there's my edit copy merge now I'm going back to my other document with the layers of different people I'm doing edit paste I'm lining it up and I keep doing that. So I'm gonna speed up the video for this part because I'm just repeating steps now. Now, after I have all my layers in place and I have a complete walk cycle, uh, I need to go back and I'm gonna actually rename all my layers in my new document that has the, the layered people in it. Um, what I'm gonna do is each layer is going to be named underscore A and Walkman. So, um, or walking men. Well, I just, I picked a random name, but each one, each layer is going to be named. So there's uh, underscore A, underscore walkman one, A, underscore A, underscore walkman two, etc. So each layer is going to have um, the name prefaced by underscore A, underscore A. That preface at the beginning of each layer lets the program know that you're going to be using it as an animation. So I just click on the name of the layer and rename it. And you do want to name them all basically the same thing except with a different number and you want that number to correspond with the sequence of movements so that when you export those layers as PNGs you know what order to put them in when you finally do your frame animation in the WIC editor. So that's what I'm doing now. And now that I've um, successfully renamed them, I'm actually going to be exporting these PNGs. Um, so I'm going to do file and then export layers. And at the very top, it says something about only with the preface of E. And you're going to uncheck that, okay? Because you want to export all the layers and you don't want to have to worry about um, what they're, you know, what prefaces at the beginning of this. So it's um, export layers as PNGs. Uh, first of all, I'm going to save this on the web. I'm going to publish it on the web and get my website address for it. And I'm going to copy and paste that into, I'm going to copy and paste that into a, um, that doc that I that I have open and I'm going to say it's my puppet stack so now I'm loading that I got the URL the website address I'm going back to that document that I had open before and I'm going to paste it in there and I'm going to explain what it is that I this is the link to this is the link to my puppet stack so I'm, I'm putting that in there with an explanation Otherwise, I won't be able to find my work again on the web if I want to come back to it the next day. So that's a very important part of your workflow is documenting where you saved your stuff. So going back to uh, Photopia, I want to export these layers and I'm going to, I'm going to do um, file export layers and um, I exported them as PNGs and when that pop-up window comes up I'm going to uncheck that top thing where it says uh, only with the beginning with E 
So I'm unchecking that and it says that I can export all seven layers and it's going to download them as a zip file. It's going to be um, a folder with um, a very compressed folder with all the images in it. So I'm going to have to click on that and I'm going to have to click extract all so that I have those seven PNGs and I can use them in my animation now. Now that I have those animation assets, I'm going to head over to the Wick editor. Um, just Google Wick, W-I-C-K editor. I'm going to open up a new file and I'm going to click import all the way in the right hand corner, import assets. And I opened up that folder and imported um, all seven of those, uh, all seven of them. I just clicked import assets and so now I'm going to have to do the whole thing again because when I drag my first frame over from the library, it's huge. I don't want that. So I'm going to go back to Photopia and I'm going to resize my image. Image, image size, and I'm going to make it smaller. Ultimately, I found that the image needed to be only about an inch. So after I've resized it and made it smaller, I saved it and I'm going to have to download all those seven layers again. So file, um, export layers, uncheck that top box um, where it says only with the preface of E and then export layers. Um, and you're going to export them as a PNG, uh, each one is a PNG, uncheck that top box, and it says you've got uh, seven layers that you can download, you hit export, and it has it as a zip file, you open up the zip file, you click extract all, and now you have your seven layers in your download as seven different images that you can now use in the Wix editor to make a frame animation. So now you're going to head over to the Wix editor and you're going to have these seven layers that you can use. So the first thing you need to do is import them. You go over and you to the right to import assets and you click and drag on all seven images and then you hit open and you bring all seven in and luckily they're in the right order because they were named in a sequence so you drag the first one over and it's still way too big um, so I'm gonna have to go back and resize it again I go back to the Photopia website and I now change it to about one inch I think it was two and a half inches before and that was too big you want to make sure you're resizing it in the Photopia website and not in the Wix editor because if you try and resize all these images uh, you'll have to do it seven different times if you do it in the Photopia website then you're just doing the whole document at once and you just have to do it once and all seven will still line up with each other they'll just have shrank so I just had to go back and do that whole thing again where I downloaded the seven images third time's the charm now I have it so now I'm going to um, go over to the Wick editor. I'm going to start all over again. Okay, so I closed it. I didn't save it. And I'm going to now re-import again my seven images. And hopefully I have it right this time. And there they are. I drag over the first one and it's the right size. I click on the next frame and that gives me another animation frame. I click on the onion skinning and now the frame is transparent. And I take the second one and I line it right up with the first one. Um, actually, what I'm going to do instead is, let me undo that because what I really want to do is I want to duplicate the first frame, copy and paste so that I have each frame twice. And this is called animating on twos and it makes your entire animation look smoother. So frame one and frame two are going to be identical. And then I'm going to click to create frame three and I'm going to drag over the next image and I'm going to line it up exactly with the first one and uh, make the heads line up. That's the easiest thing to do. And then I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. You see up there that C and that P. And so each frame is going to be repeated twice and I'm going to basically create an animation where it looks like the person is running in place. I'm going to line all the people up with each other, make sure they all line up. 
I'm not going to spread them out till later. So now I'm copying and pasting each frame so that it appears twice. I'm animating on twos and then I'm clicking on the next spot to add in another frame. So since I am repeating this process over and over again, eventually I have seven frames. That's not really, well actually 14 frames. That's not really going to be enough. Um, so I'm going to have to start repeating some of the frames. So I'm going to go back to earlier frames and just basically copying them and then pasting them at the end of the timeline to lengthen the walk cycle. Uh, you want probably anywhere from 24 to 30 frames uh, by the time you're done. So I'm just going to keep on doing that over and over again until I lengthen my timeline. Um, the other thing is you have to be real careful not to make sure your, your person's walking backwards. I accidentally did that before and had to delete the whole animation. Uh, so I'm just copying, pasting, repeating until I have anywhere from 25 to 30 frames. So I'm just going to um, fast forward through this part since it's repetitive. Now if you click on the gear in the upper right hand corner, uh, you're going to see the properties menu. And I actually decided after I started doing this that I wanted a higher res, um, larger screen. I wanted a frame rate of 24 frames per second instead of 12. And I wanted a larger file. So instead of 720, I went with 1080. I also used that to name the, the program so it wasn't just project one. So doing that, I ended up with a much larger background the guy the the size of the guy didn't change but the size of the background did change so i went from 720 to 1080 and you can see he's a lot smaller now um now that i've um, now that i've figured this all out and i've got the walk sequence i'm going to go frame by frame and reposition all my little guys so that it looks like he's starting off the left hand side of the frame and walking off the right hand side of the frame so each figure needs to be slightly ahead of the previous one and because i have clicked on the onion skinning it's um easy to see where my previous figure was. I don't need to resize any of them. They've all been resized in Photopia, so I don't have issues where they're, you know, slightly different sizes. And I'm just dragging them onto the timeline so that the feet are touching the bottom of the animation. I don't want my little walking guy to look like he's floating. And you do this all at once so that in the end, your last figure is walking off at the end of the at the end of the sequence, walking off the end of the page. So in that case, you're creating a cycle that you can actually loop and repeat because it'll look like the person walked off the edge and then if you loop it, it'll look like he's walking on again. You don't want anything that sort of stops in the middle. Um, these are very short animations and if they don't loop, um, then you're gonna run into trouble. Anyway, uh, my next step is I'm gonna create another layer underneath and that's going to be for my background so first i'm going to play my animation make sure it looks okay and that i'm happy with it and then i'm going to go over to the bottom right hand corner again and click to import assets and that's where i'm going to find a picture that i made of a city a long time ago and i'm going to to click on that and, and drag in my, um, my cityscape as a background. I'll drag that into my library right now. If you don't have anything you can use as a background, you can just draw something in marker and then scan it in using your phone and open it in Photopia and color it, which I covered in other animations. So let me find my background that I made a long time ago. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to import it and then I'm going to drag, well first I need to create a frame on my new layer. So I click on that first frame and oh good lord it's huge. So I'm actually going to drag it next to my animation frame so I can roughly resize it. I can't even see where it's supposed to go right now. It's so huge. So I'm going to keep resizing it. When you resize something, always hold the shift key down so you don't distort it. Otherwise, it'll get stretched out. So you hold the shift key down the whole time you're resizing it. Anyway, so I'm going to 
um, line my city up so that it looks right and then I actually have to go down to that layer two and I've got to take that city frame which is now only going to be visible in the very first frame and I've got to drag it out so that it goes underneath my entire uh, animation sequence otherwise the it's going to just disappear um, and now I'm going to export my video as an mp4 um, you can export it as a GIF as well if you want to, but uh, for the purpose of this assignment, I need you to export it as an MP4. So up in the top, you click um, Export. And you're going to click Video. And you click on that. It's going to take a while to export. And then it should download to the downloads of your Chromebook. Once you have it downloaded, you're probably not going to be able to play it back on a Chromebook. That's okay, because you're going to be just putting it right into Google Classroom. And once it is in Google Classroom, you will be able to view it and play it on the, the web, because that puts it up in the cloud. So um, now that it's exported, I'm going to X out that little pop-out window, and I'm going to head over to Google Classroom, and I am going to click Add, um, Add or Create, and I'm going to click Add File, and click, and I'm going to find the file in my downloads, and I'm going to put it into Google Classroom. Also going to be putting all the layers from your walk cycle into Google Classroom, all the little men, and even your background. So I have all the assets of your animation plus the finished project.